Hey friends, how's it going? Today I want to bring you a brand new way to do live looping, and this is more geared toward people doing ambient stuff, not so much BPM oriented stuff. But let me go ahead and just show you what this is. So what's going on here? Well, there are two loopers, quote unquote, but they're actually just simple delays. The time is linked and they're set to be at their longest possible uh, BPM sync. Okay. So in this case, these, these delays are basically just, you know, I can play something and then it's going to loop. Basically, it's, it sounds like about two seconds, maybe something around there. And it all depends upon what your BPM is. Okay. Um, if you pull this BPM down, then the loop becomes longer. Right? So I'm just going to leave it at 100 for now. Okay. So what's going on is that... I'll go ahead and uh, kill this real quick. So what's going on is there are two delays, and they are being fed back and forth into each other. Okay? There is looper 1 and looper 2, which are essentially two simple delays, and I have a crossfader set up. So just so you know, if you're trying to do this, you do not need a crossfader. You could just use any normal MIDI controller with a slider, a knob, um, even a button. But having a slider or a knob on the crossfader allows for stuff that I'll explain here in a little bit. So in this case, here's this crossover. And in Looper 1, it's set to A. So when the crossfader is all the way over on this side, it is listening to this looper. And when it's all the way on this side, we're listening to this looper. Now, the difference is, is that I've got both of these loopers, audio from each other. So looper one is listening to audio from looper two and looper two is listening to audio from looper, from looper one. Looper. <laughs> so, okay. So now we've got, we're back and forth, right? And the other thing that's happening is you might notice this feedback knob. Okay. So what I've done is I've mapped the feedback of looper A to be all the way up or 95% when it's all the way, when we're listening to that specific looper. When we go to the other side, okay. When we go to the other side, you can see that if I go to the other side of the crossfader, the feedback is now all the way up on the other side. So what's this going to do? What this means is that because the loopers are listening to each other and their feedback is all the way up when we are uh, crossfaded to that side, means that I can take audio that I record and I can pass it back and forth between the two sides. Okay. So why would you want to do this? Well, let's go ahead and, and, and listen. So now I've recorded some audio into the first delay, and it's just going to loop forever, right? I can now take it and move it to the other side. And this other side happens to have other effects on it, so check it out. So what I just did is I made a performance with one side, and I committed that loop to the other side. I just passed it back. Right? So this is extremely powerful stuff. Like, you, you can have so much fun with this. Just being able to have two different sets of effects on either looper and passing them back and forth forever. Okay? So you can download this set... And you can break it down yourself if you want to try to figure out how I did it. Or you can just go ahead and listen to the rest of the lesson, and I'll show you how to set this up, okay? Um, the, uh, the link is provided right here if you want to go ahead and download it. So anyway, what's going on? We have two loopers, and we've already gone over how we set up the uh, feedback dry and wet. And obviously, the dry and wet has to be 100% on both of them, of course, okay? So what is this track? Well, this track is just... It's my incoming signal, right? So I can play this incoming signal 
and it doesn't matter what the delays are set to, okay? So because uh, this is just going on, I can play over my loops. I can also listen to my initial signal that I'm sending in. So that's all that this is, okay? Now, this is going to be different for each person. The external input for you is gonna be different than the external input for me because we're using different sound cards. At this point, I'm using my Novation Peak synthesizer, and that's what's coming in, but maybe you wanna use your voice, maybe you wanna use a guitar, it doesn't matter. Any instrument you can do this with, okay? As long as it's just a live input. Now on Looper 1, there's an extra device happening here that Looper 2 doesn't have. Looper 1 and Looper 2 have a simple delay and an effect, right? Simple delay, effect. On the first one, okay, the first Looper, I also have an external audio device, okay? What this does is it just allows me to pipe in the audio from my peak, as you can see the signal coming in there, right? And I have a button, this is really important, having a button to turn that on and off, so. Okay, so when I play something and I have this turned on, I can commit something to the delay, but then I can turn it off, right? And now it's free, it's, <laughs> it's, it's in the ether, okay? So now we can... Okay, so that's that part. If I turn the looper back on, while I'm on the opposite side, when I go back to this side, it's gonna clear it. Because there's no way to pass sound back and forth because the external audio does not have a, an input that's live, okay? It, it will block, essentially, I mean, the best way to say this is that it will block the signal coming back from looper two back to one. And there are all kinds of really fun things that you can do with this. So check this out, so. All right, so I've got some audio. I go to number two. If I leave the external audio on, I can do these kind of crossfade performances. Check this out. Now check that out. How cool is that? I can get some volume swells going. So if I turn it off, now I can pass this over. And notice there's a little break in the audio too. See, so, that, so that's kind of a performance kind of thing, right? Now, another thing you should know is that you can just go ahead and easily play over this, right? Because of the live input, right? You can also record to this. So you might be wondering what's going on here. There's a... There's a, a ascend that I turn up every once in a while. Well, this is actually just an independent reverb. If you're doing ambient work, you gotta have reverb, right? So, uh, let me record a loop. See, now, isn't that nice? So I can do maybe a performance. And check it out. I'm on the other side. Maybe there's an effect going on. And I can bring it right up to the front now. How cool is that? Like, I mean, all that is, okay, all that is is just a send reverb. <laughs> I had a little bit of that loop left over. It's just a send reverb. So all that matters here is that you just have your dry wet turned all the way up, okay? And I've mapped not only the loopers, but the live input to go to that reverb, okay? This reverb is totally independent of the looping system, and that's just kind of nice because you can go out into space and come back, okay? So let's talk about the crossfader. Check this out. So I've got a loop captured, right? Something that's really fun that you can do with the crossfader is you can actually put the crossfader in the middle. Now uh, you can hear it start to get a little like warbly and a little glassy, a little lo-fi. Check this out. As you can hear, I've captured that kind of glassy kind of sound. How nice is that? A little reverb, just it's just incredible, right? So this is a really cool way to do some lo-fi stuff, right? When the crossfader is in the middle, it's important to know what setting the crossfader curve is on. So you actually can right-click on a crossfader and check this out. If I turn this up to constant power, listen to the loop. As you can see, it's getting louder every time, see that? 
So this is a great way to get some, some action going on. There are some options here. You can choose Dipped, and what Dipped does is that if it's in the middle, it'll slowly get quieter. Right? It's, a, it's like a controlled way to do this. If you put it on constant power, though, or any of these higher settings, like uh, slow cut, slow fade, transition, these will get loud pretty fast. Watch. See how fast that's getting loud? That's not necessarily what we want. I like to use dipped myself, but you can use constant power. Like if you're really going ham on the effects and it gets real quiet because of all the things you've done in the effects, if you put it on constant power, you can recover some of that volume over time, right? And you can get these cool... Right? So just remember, all the while, if I'm on this side, okay, I can always add to the loop by turning on my external audio, So I'm going to clear this again by, I'm going to show you this one more time, turning on the external audio, going to the other side, and waiting for the loop to be over, it's cleared, okay? So the next thing I want to show is BPM. So you're probably wondering, hey, well, these, these simple delays are locked to the clock. Like, why wouldn't I want to have, why wouldn't I want to do this to beats? Well, every single time you record one looper into the other, because they're live listening to each other, Ableton is imparting the latency of your system into the other looper. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, you can do this to varying degrees of success, but check it out. So here's a, here's a little loop. So this is just keeping time, right? I'm gonna go to the first side, turn this on and check it out. So there's a BPM oriented loop, right? I'm gonna go to the other side, do some stuff. So it sounds cool, but listen to how it's off the beat. If I keep doing this back and forth, it's just going to get worse and worse. Okay, so <laughs> so you can see, like, you get a good, you know, you get a good maybe like you know four or five loops before it becomes unusable. But but in this case, this is more oriented toward ambient performance okay this is this is an ambient performance kind of thing um so it you know you'll just lose the beat over time um, but if you can keep it to just a couple loops uh before you do something new you could probably you know conceivably do this with 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 beats behind it too um so okay why is this useful well first of all those that are trying to do live ambient looping live ambient performance this is really nice it's it's incredible and like changing the effects that you have on either side is really nice. But one of the reasons I should explain, I have an uh, an auto filter on this side and an erosion on this side because the auto filter kind of it's a filter, it removes sound. But the cool thing about erosion is that it can add like the treble that's lost with a low pass. Um, so basically, you can go back and forth between these forever and still be able to recover the audio. There, I would think of them as complementary effects. Um, so uh, another thing, another use that that this could be for is uh, your recording. Uh, some music and you and even in a BPM way you can do a lot of edits and get a lot of really cool things and then you can just record the output of one of these loopers after you've got like a wacky loop going into a new audio track and you can save those for later for use in your productions okay this is a really fast way to make some really rad stuff it's not just for melodic stuff too you can make like sweeps and all kinds of crazy stuff capture them and put them somewhere else so that's another really you know uh, cool use for this. So I, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Again, you can download this set. I made it in Ableton 9.6. You might be wondering why. Well, that's because anyone with Ableton 10 can still open this or 9.6 and above. 
Um, yeah, if you got use out of this, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell for notifications, uh, supporting the Patreon. Either way, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this, and uh, happy looping, everyone. Thanks.